whether you're over at a machine, or you're sitting at your desk, or you're up there washing your hands, the whole time we're in the room, we'll leave glasses on. Now, these are shatterproof glasses, which means that if they crack, they'll just like break into pieces. They won't shatter the way glass does. That's what makes them safer to be around the eyes. If you already have glasses, if you're already wearing glasses, you won't need to put these safety glasses on over top, okay? Because the glasses you're wearing should be protection enough. These glasses here, I always wondered, like, what's the difference? Why do we have these? These are to protect you from being splashed by something. So if you're mixing paint or working with some type of chemical at home or something, and um, the stuff, you didn't want to get it in your face, splash-proof goggles, all right? So these are for fabrication and safety. These are for splashes. All right. When you get the glasses out of the cabinet, they should look clean. If they're smudged or something, feel free to wash them off in the sink. But I want you to know that this is a special cabinet that has a big light bulb in the back here. You can't really see it because it's clear. But when the light bulb turns on, when the doors are shut, it glows purple. It's an ultraviolet light. The same type of light that's in a, in a tanning salon, a tanning bed, right? Ultraviolet light is so powerful it breaks down or it kills bacteria. So that's what sanitizes the glasses and keeps them clean. Okay. All right, cool. Doing good. Get over here. I've got some brooms around the room. Big shop push broom. Some kitchen brooms. And when you when we do get to clean up in lab at the end of the period. Everybody will have to do their part and pitch in, whether it was your mess or not, because if everyone here works for two minutes during cleanup, and there's 20 people in the room, that's 40 minutes worth of cleaning that somebody like me would have to do by themselves if we didn't have any help. That's why the saying, many hands make light work, comes into play. So brooms will be available to you. We can sweep things into piles and eventually suck them up with the shop vac. We'll get to that one, we'll get to that one momentarily. This is a special kind of sink, unlike the one that may be in your house. Actually, you might have one of these in the basement or in the furnace room. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, this is called a slop sink, S-L-O-P, a slop sink. It's made extra deep so that you can get sloppy in there. You can clean out cans of paint. You can wash your hands. You can clean off paint brushes. Um, slop sink, all right? So this is something that's available to you. You can wash your hands. Make sure you look all right in the mirror. Got the towels there as well. All right, working our way around the room. This was actually the first thing I noticed when I came in here before the summer had started and the room was empty. I saw this big red button sitting over here. If I open this up and I press that red button in, what it will do is turn off the power to everything in the room. All the outlets get cut off, all the switches get turned off. The only thing that stays on are the lights on the ceiling. Let me tell you a scenario. Let's say everybody was in the lab and we were working and somehow somebody had something heavy on the table and it dropped off onto the ground and it broke somebody's little toe and they were really hurt and they were yelling, ah, ah, my toe, my toe, my toe. All of a sudden, everybody else around the room starts looking at over there to see what the trouble is. They might even be on a machine and now they're distracted and they look over and they're not paying attention because they're seeing, they're looking at this person who just got hurt. If you get to, got distracted away from where you were working, then you might get hurt. So all labs will have an emergency power switch that cuts all the power off. That way, if you see some type of serious emergency in the classroom, like someone is hurt, somebody really needs help, um, somebody passes out for some reason, Let's say somebody cut themselves with a pair of scissors and it was more than something you would just need a little Band-Aid for. We would consider these things to be emergencies, all right? And definitely worthy of hitting the red button. So if there ever is an emergency in the classroom, I want you to know that you have the authority to press that red button and shut the power off, number one. Number two, you'd come, I mean, obviously we'd all know the power went off, but you would make sure that the instructors in the room are aware of the issue, right? That we're aware. Sometimes if a student gets hurt or something's wrong, they might be embarrassed or they don't want anybody to know and they try to hide it. 
And if you see that happening with a friend or another person in class, you have to tell the instructor. I had a kid one time who cut his finger in a class and uh, was just like one or two stitches. How many people here have had stitches before? Gotcha. Um, and the student was, um, what was I just going to say? He cut his finger. Cut his finger. He had cut his finger and he was embarrassed. He didn't want anybody to know. He thought he might get in trouble for it because he was playing around with these scissors. So he stuck his hand in his pocket and he walked around like this all class period. And I was like, that looks really weird. He never does that. You know when somebody acts a little bit different, you could tell? Yeah. And I look over and there's like a little red spot on his pocket. He was just going to like hide it all day long, I guess. Um, people make mistakes. We care very much about your health and your safety. And you got to look out for each other too, all right? So if there's an accident in the room and it's an emergency, hit the red button. Tell the instructor. And the third piece would be bring the nurse up here to the classroom. Why do you think we'd rather have the nurse come up here to visit somebody? As I heard a story one time where a student got cut and they knew their finger was cut and they grabbed it right away. They weren't going to let it bleed or anything. They were going to pinch it. All right? And they said to the teacher, teacher, I, I know I got cut. I know I'm going to go, I have to go to the nurse. And the teacher says, well, how bad is it? And the student says, well, I think I might need stitches, but I don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it. Some people don't like to look, look, at, look at blood. It can be gross. So the teacher says, well, you seem fine. Why don't you walk yourself down to the nurse? Now, you know what? Take somebody with you, just in case you feel nauseous. So the two are walking down to the nurse's office together. And the one friend says, whoa, you got cut, huh? Can I look at it? And the girl says, nah, I don't know, I don't know. And the kid says, come on, let me see it. Sounds cool. And the girl says, well, OK, I'm not going to look, but you can. And as they're walking, she goes like this and shows him. And he goes, oh, oh my gosh. And she looks over, looks at him, goes, oh, and passes out. <laughs> Hits her head on the floor and actually ends up with another injury, with a head injury. See what I mean about, you know, yeah. Um, bringing the nurse up here to the classroom would be the thing to do. And I'm sure I'm something that's something we can do, reach by phone or grab another teacher or an instructor in the room can do it. All right? Emergency procedures. Still working our way around the lab here. We'll, we'll touch upon these and you'll use them later. These are batteries that hook up to these battery powered drills. We can drill holes with these. We can also put screws into something. All right? The battery powered drills, particularly these little ones, these are ones that you're going to be utilizing in here for yourself. You'll have to ask an instructor before you take any tool or use any machine. You'll have to ask permission. That way we know that what you're doing is something you should be doing and that we're comfortable with it. At least it'll be like that in the beginning. Okay? Um, working always occurs at the tabletops where you're sitting unless you're going to be using a specific machine that you have permission for. We're not going to use all these machines, but you will use a scroll saw. You will use a hot wire cutter to cut styrofoam. All right? And you may use a drill press with a teacher, possibly. Okay. Notice right now I'm standing in a box that's mapped out with this yellow and black tape, this caution tape. Yeah, and you'll see more of that put up on the other side of the room soon, too. This is called the safety zone. Um, you didn't hear the lesson about Hippie John getting his hair caught in a drill press, did you? No. Yes, yeah, so you're going to hear a safety story about a boy who had really long hair and he didn't tie it back. And he was working at a drill press and his hair actually got caught in the spinning part of the drill press. Yeah, and that had resulted in an, in an injury. Um, but the drill press is something that we'll, we might do some practice with. Um, but for the most part, it's going to be something that you have to operate with a teacher. We're all going to use it when we put the chassis together and we build the pink foam, the pink block on the back of the car. Okay. All right. Let me get back to where I was at over here. We've got clamps. We've got drills. These are cutting mats that are going to be around the room for you. Right. When you want to cut something. Um, if we end up using a certain type of a, an exacto razor with a teacher, it would be cut on a cutting mat. You can cut these with a razor over and over again, and they never actually cut open. They're like a really, really strong polymer. And um, hot glue guns would also be used over top of these, too. Make sense? 
Yeah, we don't want the hot glue guns to get on the tabletops. And I appreciate you taking care of those tabletops, by the way, so that we keep them from being stained and we can uh, keep writing on them for the rest of the year here. All right, these tools, uh, tool shelves are full of, the drawers are full of tools. We'll go over what different tools are later. This is a bench vise. You could probably bend a quarter in half with one hand in this big, powerful vise. We also have little vices, little blue ones. Uh, you can see one attached to the table up there in the front corner. You'll be able to hook those up to your table to do work. If you end up taking a tool out of here, you ask the teacher, you get permission, and it's a tool that might be sharp, we carry these, making sure we're aware of whoever is around us. We don't carry them up in the air. We don't hold them out like this, walk around, we keep them close to us and keep the sharp side of something pointed down. Yeah. With the safety zone, the point of the safety zone is that if you're working at a piece of equipment, nobody can talk to you. No one's allowed to talk to you. You don't talk to anybody else, even if they're sitting right here. When you're working, you have to be focused there. Um, Can't stress this enough. When you're in the room during lab, your safe zone here, nobody comes in the safe zone, and you don't talk to anybody. When you have a tool at your desk, or you see somebody with a hot glue gun out, you have to stay three feet away from them. Three feet away from them. Because even just tripping on your shoelace, bumping into this girl's shoulder, then she bumps into her shoulder, and she's got a hot glue gun. Now the hot glue gun jumps up and hits her in the arm and burns her in the arm. <laughs> and she wasn't even doing anything wrong. All right? And you, you know, I'll remind you of this plenty when we start to work, but we can't mess around. We can't mess around. Um, I will be very strict about all these rules, and I know it's a lot to remember at first, but we'll catch on to them really quick. This red trash can would be for rags and paintbrushes and things that might have um, a chemical on them or they don't mix well with other trash. And so far as we know, we're not going to use any chemicals in, this, in any of these design challenges. So for now, leave this trash can alone. Don't put regular paper towels in it. That's why we got the big one over there on wheels. Okay. All right. Working our way down. Hot wire styrofoam cutter, scroll saw, drill press. These are our materials over here. Primarily, you're going to work with really thin strips of wood, cardboard, pink styrofoam, like you've seen already, and other thin sheets of material. We won't be cutting any metal pipes in here. We won't be uh, bringing in any big, thick pieces of wood and trying to cut those up. All those things will end up being too heavy anyway for your vehicle. How many, what's the maximum weight going to be on your vehicle? Half a pound. Half a pound. How many, what's that in grams? Eight. Uh, 224 grams. Oh, right. Nice job. All right. We're going to take a look at the shop vac now. Okay. The wet dry vac serves two purposes. You can suck up gravel with one of these things. It'll pick up all kinds of stuff a regular vacuum cleaner can't. You can also use it to suck up water. Some people keep these in their basement in case the basement floods. They can suck water up with this. This is really powerful. Uh, try not to vacuum up any pairs of scissors or pencils because they would get pulled into the tube. And um, if I could show you here, this piece off. If we hook the hose up to one side, it's going to have a sucking power to the end of it, right? That's what a vacuum cleaner is supposed to do, make vacuum pressure. But you could put it on the other side over here, and what would happen if you hooked the hose up there? Yeah, it's blowing air out. Um, yeah, even though you may be tempted to use this to clean yourself off, don't put it onto your skin, okay? It's just powerful. It, would, it, could leave, it could definitely leave a mark. Um, and definitely don't ever put it up on your face, OK? During cleanup time, we'll say, all right, everybody, stop working, clean up. And at that time, you have 30 seconds to stop all work so that everyone in the room is cleaning, right? We don't want somebody to keep working with a tool and then bump into somebody who's cleaning. Um, 
and there's two shop backs here, so you'll be able to utilize those. When they fill up, we take them, we can empty them out, all right? But they do have a cord on them. And what do you think my concern might be with cords and long extension cords in the lab? Tripping, Tripping right. So we're never going to stretch any extension cords across the room anywhere. You may even find we'll have some outlets in the ceiling that hang down and hot glue guns, things like that, could plug right into them. Um, that way we're never putting a cord out across the room. Anything you take out of a toolbox or any tool you use or material you use, you have to clean it before you put it away and put it away the same place that you got it. If there was dust on the tabletop or you're using a scroll saw, there's, there's sawdust all around, you might be inclined to walk up and go <laughs> and blow it all over the place. But then what happens on the floor? It's slippery. So if you do see piles of dust somewhere or materials, make sure that we clean them up and don't wait till the end of class because we don't want to get all that stuff into the air or have a tripping hazard. The top comes off. What's this thing here? Filter. Filter. Right. Um, if you have to vacuum up water in your house, you have to take the filter off. We don't use the filter if we switch over from solids to liquid. So, so you know, right? And otherwise it will work just like a regular vacuum cleaner. This little nut comes off down here. We could pop the filter off. A round filter like that is the same one inside that air filter over there. That's an air filter. So it sucks air in this way. And then that air travels through a big mesh filter with carbon rocks inside of it and it sucks up whatever is in the air and then shoots clean air back out of the top. There's going to be a few times where we're going to want to use that, in particular when we're using the hot wire styro styrofoam cutter. Do you see that the little machine that has the wire going up and down on the blue square? That little wire will cut through the styrofoam like a hot knife would cut through butter. In fact, even smoother than that. And you're going to get a full demonstration lesson on that later. But when we do that, uh, no, another lesson, when we do that, we have to have the HEPA filter turned on to suck up those exhaust fumes. All right. Whiteboards around the room are things you're going to be allowed to write on if you want to go up and like, check something out with somebody, explain an idea to them. If the space is open, you can write on it. You just have to clean it up when you're done. And do you know what you clean whiteboards off with? Yeah, we actually don't even want to use a paper towel. I'm going to use a nice cotton cloth or one of these microfiber cloths. And there's a special spray, Expo marker spray, which has like a little bit of an alcohol solution in it. And this cleans the boards, but also makes a nice film on there that's nice and smooth for the next time you write on it. If you were to take household cleaner, all-purpose cleaner, and spray the boards down with it, eventually it would wear away the surface, and the whiteboard markers wouldn't work as well on there. All right. Inside these cubbies on your tables, um, each cubby should be holding the same things. Don't worry about it now, but as time goes by, there will be more things in the cut inside the caddies. But this is also something we have to clean out during cleanup time. Vacuum these things out, get underneath the tables. If you're looking around, you can't find a broom, you can't find a vacuum, then clean the tabletops off with some of the expo marker solution. Come up and ask an instructor, hi, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Can you give me a job? That's the best when you're always eager and looking for a way to pitch in and help out. If cleanups can happen in two minutes, we'll, we'll only do a two minute cleanup every day. But if cleanup takes like seven or eight minutes, then we'll have to stop class a little earlier every day, right, to make sure we get the time to clean, to clean up. So always be looking for a cleanup job. This is where project storage will be held. One of, your, one of these shelves will be dedicated just to your class, and this is where you're going to keep uh, folders later and where you'll keep your, your engineer's notebook or your portfolio and you'll also keep your cars here as you're building them and if you bring in any donated supplies or any supplies you want to keep for yourself we could keep them on the shelves or find space for them in our lockers over there. This is a bench, a bench top bandsaw. It's something you may use when you get into seventh or eighth grade. This is an oscillating spindle sander. Sands. It sands inside curves, yeah. Fire extinguisher. How many people have shot off a fire extinguisher before? No? All right. 
Remember the little CO2 powered canister you saw me shoot off the car with? Yeah. This is a giant one of those. There's enough gas under pressure here to fill up a balloon that would be bigger than that doorway, all compressed into here. So the second you squeeze this handle and open the valve and give that gas a little hole to escape through, <laughs> flying out of there. There's a couple different types of fire extinguishers. Some of them will shoot water, but more than likely, they have carbon dioxide and a dry powder inside of them. And if there's flames somewhere, the carbon dioxide um, sucks the oxygen away from the fire and helps extinguish it. All right? But I want you to know how to use one of these in case you ever had to pick up a fire extinguisher and use it. They're not too heavy. Um, when you grab them, there should be a pin here. And this pin is, is keeping me from pulling on the valve because the pin has it locked up. All right? Once I pull that pin out, then I can squeeze. And I know it doesn't look like a can of spray paint, but it just has a lever up here that takes the place of the little button on a can, like that a can of spray paint would have. Because there's so much pressure, it takes a lever to get enough power to push the valve down. When, if you, there was a fire, you would aim this at the base of the fire. Not up in the air over it, but right at the base of the fire. Okay. Hopefully you'll never have to use one in here, but over the course of the rest of your life, you never know. I've been, I've been in the kitchen a few times where my parents ended up having like a grease fire in the house when we were younger. I saw them use a fire extinguisher before. She got up and grabbed the emergency fire blanket. I have to take it out of here. But a fire blanket is a little bit special. It's made of a special fiber, and it's been dipped in something called a brominated flame retardant, a BFR. And a BFR is a chemical that if you soak a material in it, it makes it really hard to catch that material on fire. You could throw this in a giant bonfire and it would not, it would not be destructed. So if a let's just say there was a machine on fire or, um, right, or a, a piece of clothing caught on fire, a fire blanket is a really safe thing right, to help smother the flames. Right here I have a little first aid kit. This is not for you to come up and open and administer first aid. It's, we need to have one of these here in the room in case we need it to tend to an emergency while we were waiting for a nurse or something of that nature. But um, there's just some general supplies there, alcohol wipes, gloves, things like that. Um, up across the front of this room here, there will be another cabinet at some point that will hold things like paints and other liquids. It's a flammables cabinet. You'll see this big yellow cabinet here eventually. You know about the smart board. The speaker will be up off the ground. And this thing here, I know you may not be able to see it too well. It's just a big tank that holds compressed air. Did you ever see an air hose where somebody's got a hose and they squeeze it, and they can shoot, they can clean up the floor with it? You've seen an air hose? Yeah, maybe you've, maybe you've driven by like an auto shop and you hear them taking the wheels off of somebody's car. That's a drill. That's a drill that's being powered by an air tank. Right, an air compressor or a pneumatic compressor. Did you ever hear the word pneumatic? P-N-E-U-M-A-T-I-C? Pneumatic, it means air, air powered. What about something that's powered with, a, with an oil? Do you know that one too? Hydraulic, hydraulic. All right, um, up here in the front, I've got my markers, but even cooler are these different sets of gloves we have. Two specific kinds. These leather gloves are something you might wear on your hand when you're using the hot wire styrofoam cutter so that your hand doesn't bump into the wire and get burned. Leather gloves. These gloves are a little bit different. And these are something that would keep your hand from getting cut if you were using a knife and it happened to scrape across the fabric. This would keep the, keep the knife from going through the fabric. All right. So these are something people use often when they're like gutting a fish or they're cleaning a deer after they've been hunting. But people also use these if they're working with lots of sharp materials. So definitely the leather gloves for the hot wire styrofoam cutter. I'm not sure if you'll need these sharp gloves later, but it's possible, but I want you to know what they are. Ah, scrap boxes. When we're cutting up the foam and the wood, there's always going to be little pieces of wood and foam that are kind of big, too big to go in the trash can. Maybe we could use them again later. There will be big boxes that say scrap on the front. 
always keep your, your scraps in the scrap box. You'll have scrap boxes located around the room in different locations.